every second that you're not acting, somebody else is, right? They're taking your customers. They're seizing opportunities. They're making their dreams a reality. So the only person standing between you and your business growth is, my friend, you. Welcome to the Product Boss Podcast, where we're dedicated to helping product-based business owners turn into revenue-generating, successful, happy product bosses. I'm Jacqueline Snyder. And I'm Mina kunlo Together through digital courses, coaching, and masterminds, we've helped over 50,000 students from startup to multi-million dollar businesses scale their sales while blending in their dream life. It gets lonely out there in the product business world. We fully believe a business shouldn't be built alone. There's room at the top for all of us. So let's get scrappy and creative together, product boss, to be profitable, make more sales, and grow your visibility. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Hey, hey there, product boss. Okay, so what if Q4 could be a breeze and you could get new customers and organize everything all in one tab instead of juggling dozens? What if connecting with your customers was seamless, leaving no room for uncertainties, right? No unread emails or angry customers that haven't heard back from you. So enough what ifs. Let me introduce you to HubSpot's Sales Hub. Discover a world where sales are smarter, revenues grow faster, and customer insights go deeper, all in one connected platform. Now imagine, all your data, tools, and team harmoniously linked on a customizable platform that's a joy to use. QQ4, right? We want more joy in this season. Don't let the busiest time of year overwhelm you. If you're going to wear all the hats, you might as well wear them confidently, right? And probably look a little good wearing them. We want you to reduce that stress and allow your product business to flourish at the same time, right? Win, win. So time to grow better and be the product boss you were meant to be. With Sales Hub, closing deals is no big deal. Try it for yourself at hubspot.com slash sales. Hey friends, it's Jacqueline Snyder here, and we are back with another episode of the Product Boss Podcast. Alrighty. So today's episode is going to be for hopefully a catalyst and a little push for all of our listeners out there, for every entrepreneur who's ever needed a push, right? Because today's episode is all about the words. It's two words. Let's go. Okay. Or in Italian, andiamo. Let's go. Now, I traveled a lot this summer and I was in Italy and, you know, I, I always love it. I love watching the tour guides um, with the long like flag stick in front of a whole group of people. And they're like, andiamo, andiamo, right? Let's go. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving this along. Follow me and let's go. And that's sort of what I want to do for you today, right? So if you've ever been that entrepreneur that's been warming the bench, right, waiting for a sign or hesitating to take the leap, This episode is going to be your wake up call, right? No more inaction, only traction, only action. So let's dive in. All right. So every day that you decide to sit on the sidelines, something happens, right? Because, or something doesn't happen actually for you because the world keeps moving, right? The market keeps evolving opportunities keep happening. Customers keep buying. But when you are on the sidelines, all of these opportunities for you, they start to slip right through, right? So sometimes we get so caught in the action of doing something, right? We overthink our actions. We overthink, is this the right decision? Because a lot of this comes down to decision-making. That's sort of like analysis paralysis, if you will. Um, where we stop and we think and we overthink and we want perfection and we want things to be just right. Things need to be all conditions. The room has to be a cool 72 degrees. You know, it has to be a certain time in the day. The wind has to be blowing from Northwest, whatever it is. (laughs) Things have to feel so perfect for us to take action. But when we wait, there truly is a cost of inaction. So what is it costing you? What are these missed opportunities costing you? What is the ripple effect of that inaction on your business? So I think back to 2020. 
sorry to bring that year up again with all of you, but I think back to 2020 and I think back to really the first couple of days that the world shut down, at least here in the U S my husband's a Broadway actor, Broadway shut down, the NBA shut down the same night. People were like, the NBA is shut down. What do we all do? And I remember getting messages. I, I jumped onto Instagram doing live stories and be like, it's going to be okay to the community as like all of you entrepreneurs, it's going to be okay. We just got to keep moving. We got to keep going. We have to keep selling. We have to show up. You know, one of the things that we built during that time was, um, we called it the survival kit course bundle where we were like, how to get your, your, um, brick and mortar business online fast, right? Like for everybody that was doing in-person shows and brick and mortars that were not set up at the time to be online, we needed to get them online. And the coolest thing was that we had social media to connect with our customers. And even the cooler thing is Instagram shops was released that year to help us connect with our customers. Okay. So there was a lot of pause. There was a lot of fear. There was a lot of like, hold on, let's just kind of wait. Let's see. Let's see what happens. And I remember really specifically Annika of Hey Mavens. There's some people that we mention a lot because they're really close to us in our minds and our hearts because There was a time that we actually all went through this world together in that way, right? Like 2020, a lot of our students that came in, we were all just figuring it out on our own, okay? So Annika had come to us at that point, and I remember her messaging us on DM and saying, I don't know that it's right to sell. Like, people are telling me, like, it's inappropriate to sell right now. It's inappropriate to get on and be like, hey, if you need this. And we said, actually, keep going. Keep going. Let's go. Let's do this. People are bored. People are at home. They need hope. They need other things to do. Right. Um, who is, who is this person, this troll on the internet (laughs) to tell you to stop your business from continuing to move forward, to stop making money that feeds your family, that feeds yourself, that feeds your employees. Right. Who is this person to tell you to come to a dead stop when you actually have the ability to keep business going? right? And that was the push. That was the idea of like, don't sit on the sidelines. Keep going. Keep doing this. And what happened? (laughs) I think Annika had made the most ever in her business, like $1,200, maybe $2,000 in a month working in her business. And then she was working with us. She became a student of ours. And literally 30 days later, her company made $12,500. I think it was in from June to July of 2020, selling lingerie online, right? No one needed lingerie. We all needed toilet paper, (laughs) but you know what people needed? They needed connection. They needed a way to keep their minds busy, right? How many of us really got into internet shopping in that year? So if she had stopped, if she had listened to the person that the keyboard warrior that told her to just stop, because that person felt it was inappropriate for her to keep her business running. She would have missed this opportunity. What would have been her cost of an action? She grew immensely that year. She grew to a multi six figure business, right? She, she was able to pay for her IVF journey, which now she has like a year and a half old baby and that she was able to take time off of with and be with her child while her business kept going. So, that inaction would have actually cost a lot. All right. So I want you to think about if you there's been any missed opportunities or things that you've waited on the sidelines a little bit too long for, right? Because what's really going on here? Like what's really holding us back? Well, a lot of times fear. Fear is has taken the wheel. Fear is in the driver's seat. We're in the back and fear is driving. And that is truthfully the thing that's holding us back, right? We have a fear of failure. We have a fear of judgment. But let's kind of dig into fear. Okay, let's dissect it a little. Hey, Product Boss. I'm just going to interrupt this show really quickly because it's podcast recommendation time. This month, I am all about inclusion and marketing podcasts. Now, this is hosted by the incredible Sonia Thompson, and brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. On her inclusion and marketing podcast, Sonia does an amazing job of diving into important topics like belonging, customer experience, and diversity. 
She also will give you practical tips and advice on how you can authentically practice inclusive marketing within your own business. Now, one of my favorite most recent episodes includes Sonia and three other inclusive marketers who dive into recent big brand marketing campaigns such as the AI generation of Barbie from around the world and the Barbieheimer controversy, right? Where they share their reactions and discuss their perspectives on these campaigns and the importance of incorporating inclusivity and culture intelligence into marketing. This episode was so insightful and had so many amazing takeaways to consider as a business owner, especially when it comes to authentically portraying inclusivity when marketing your brand and products to your customers. Listen to inclusion and marketing wherever you get your podcasts. Now back to the show. Hey, hey, product boss. Okay, it's your product biz coach here, Jacqueline, and I have a treat for you. So the other day we got a message on Instagram from our friend Lolly. Now she's a product boss and she was on the hunt for an easy to use inventory management software to keep track of her raw goods and what she had ready to sell. And guess what? We had an answer for her. Not only did we have a fantastic inventory management software to refer her to, but we also had a whole treasure chest of 308 other business tools and resources to make her product-based business easier to manage and, and more efficient to grow. And we have it for you as well. Now picture this packaging and printing supplies, affiliate management, website and email software, legal resources, video and photo tools. Oh my, you name it. We've got it. And here's the cherry on top. It is totally free, right? It's not going to cost you a single penny. That's right, because you can get your hands on the Product Boss's Ultimate Resource Guide absolutely free. We are on a mission to change small businesses' lives and, and their ability to grow around the world. And whatever we can do to help you do that, we are here for it. And so we're hoping that this resource guide is one step closer to reaching your dreams. So all you need to do is slide into our DMs on Instagram with the word guide and just send us that message and we will send you a link to download it right away. Or you can head straight to theproductboss.com slash resource guide. Easy peasy. Oh, and did I mention you can also DM us guide on Instagram and voila, we'll shoot you that link right away. So my friend, don't wait another second. You can get your hands on the ultimate resource guide for product bosses right now. Now let's jump back into the show. So fear comes because we're, we're unsure, like we're, we are unsure of what's going to happen. We don't know. We don't know what's on the other side. We don't know the results that we're going to get. We, it's an emotional response to a perceived threat right? At its core, it's our survival mechanism. I always think like whenever I got really fearful, like really scared, I was like, but I'm not a caveman in a cave with a literal bear or monster outside, like monster animal, right? That is true fear. That is like primal response. Like there is an immediate threat. Most of the other things that we're scared of, our brain thinks are something that's like a a real threat, but it's really just our brain. So at its core, remember, it's a survival mechanism. And when humans or even animals perceive that threat, fear, fear takes control and either either puts us into fight or flight. Fight, we're going to try and fight it off. Flight is we're running from it. We're just avoiding it. And fear did serve our ancestors well. Our ancestors in that cave with that bear outside, (laughs) you better believe if they felt this, this threat, they were going to fight it. And those who did fight the threats sur- likely were the ones who survived. And so we passed that on, we passed on the, the evolutionary part of fear and our reaction to fight or flight to survive, right? Natural selection. This is what kept us going. But our brain right now, when our brain processes it, right, our brain doesn't know the difference between fear of, <laughs> it's going to sound so silly. But fear of going live on Instagram to talk about a product launch or fear of a bear outside your cave, right? Your brain is like, oh, hmm, this is this is really scary, right? And then we start to release like adrenaline and fear homo- hormones and, and um, we get like those physical sensations, right? Like your heart beats, like you get sweaty, you get that rapid heartbeat, you get tingly, you get like choked up, like all of that. 
But the thing is, is we're not running from predators anymore, right? And I get it. (laughs) There is an absolute fear of speaking in public. I get it. My son, we worked on it for a lot of years for having a mom who's a podcaster and a dad who's an actor and a sister who could be all of it. So we've really had to work on overcoming his fear of speaking in front of people. You know, that, but really what is that fear of? It's the fear of judgment, right? It's the fear of uncertainty. It's the fear of that anxiety around the uncertainty. So when we're talking about this and we're talking about, you know, the cost of inaction and the cost of our fear, there is a point, and this is my gentle nudge to all of you. This is my let's go is that. Every second that you're not acting, somebody else is, right? They're taking your customers. They're seizing opportunities. They're making their dreams a reality. So the only person standing between you and your business growth is, my friend, you. So let's be done with that, right? Let's shake off the doubts we have in ourselves. Let's move past those hesitations. Let's go. Let's do this together. I don't want you sitting on the sidelines anymore warming that bench, right? I I don't want you thinking, oh, it's for someone else, but it's not for me. Inaction is going to cost us our dreams. Action is going to get us closer, even if we fail. Even if we fall down, we're going to pick ourselves back up, right? Let's go. We do not tell a baby to not learn how to walk because baby is going to fall down, right? We have to let our kids fall down. We have to let a toddler learn to stand up and fall down. Of course, we can make sure that they're not near any sharp edges, right? Or falling off the side of something tall. But when they're getting up and learning to walk, they're going to fall down. We're going to be like, oh, we're going to help them back up. And we're going to let them walk a few more steps. And then they're going to fall down. But eventually, they're going to walk. They're going to learn to walk. And then hopefully, eventually, they're going to learn to run. And then one day there will be bigger kids and you will see them running and walking and you will not think, oh my goodness, unless they're running down like a steep hill or whatever, right? But like, typically you're going to look at them and you're going to be like, they got it. We didn't tell them to not do it when they were younger because they were going to fall down because we knew that they had to go through it. So why do we treat ourselves differently in our lives as we're growing, as we're learning, as we're learning how to walk through life and we're learning how to walk through fear and we're learning that it's okay, right? So let's switch the I'm not ready to I'm doing this, right? Let's switch the conditions must be perfect to conditions may never be perfect, but what is the cost of my inaction, all right? So if you, my friend, are ready to get off the bench, I wanted to give you a few actionable, you know, steps to kickstart your momentum. So the first thing is, is like set some clear goals. That goal can just be knowing what you want. It can be a straight up goal. I want a thousand followers on social media. I want to sell to 10 wholesale stores. I want a hundred thousand dollar business. I want a million dollar business. I want to leave my full-time job, whatever it is, set your goal. And it can also be personal as well. But since it's a business podcast, I'm going to usually typically lean towards business. And then I want you to break it down into tasks right? Like I had this conversation yesterday with one of our masterminders and she was like, she was in paralysis. She was like, how do I possibly do all the things that I want to do? Let me see if I can find this and read it to you really fast. It was just kind of like this massive amount of overwhelm. Okay. This is what it is. I need help. Mm -mm. I need help figuring out the next step when I sit down to work every day. And I mean that honestly, the sense of overwhelm at what to focus on every day is paralyzing. And I tell you what I've done at the end of the day, and it never feels like enough. And then she asked, what are the strategies for focus when sales is the goal, but also doing emails, social ops, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So what she was feeling was she was feeling super overwhelmed by the big goal, the little goals and all the things. And I love it because in a mastermind, you have a group of incredible, incredible business owners and humans. And there's about seven responses that people gave her as well as my response as well. 
And the thing was, is was, it was like breaking it down, right? Breaking it down, asking for help. One of our masterminders responded and said, the first thing I do every day is I do a brain dump before I turn on my computer of what's, what are my, what's on my mind. Then I just write my have tos, my should dos, my delegates, and my some days. And for goals and strategies, each weekend, I try to plan out my next big task for what the week, for the week to move the needle forward. And I put them on my calendar. Let me tell you, if it's not on my calendar, I don't do it. So example, record podcast episodes in my calendar. How many do I need to record? And I've set that date with myself and I do it, right? So that's, I mean, I love this response. This is, these are six figure business owners supporting six and seven figure supporting each other, right? So they are kind of going back and forth and giving that answer because we always are going to feel stuck. Some of you out there might be like, I wish I was a six figure business because she did something to get her to where she is. And then there's something else that she needs to do. Someone else said that they love to batch everything, right? Two to three hours of solid focus time right? To do the batching. So that's sort of step number two is break down tasks, batch, and all the things. The other part I think is community, right? Connecting with other people that have been where you are and have moved past it, that are in it with you. This is a perfect example inside of this mastermind that we have. There are people that sometimes are better with time management or sometimes are less risk adverse or sometimes are less in their head or they're in their head in a different way. And so those people can help support you as well. So I know we have our multi-stream machine community and next level, right? They help move each other through in a lot of ways and then in our mastermind. So where are you finding that network and that community to help motivate you to get you off the bench, right? I know you're listening to this episode right now if you've made it this far in the episode, right? So you're listening. So hopefully I can be your coach on the side that's like, let's do it. Let's go right? What are we missing out on in our lives in an action versus let's go. All right. So here's your challenge for the week. I want you to identify one, one thing, one thing that you've been holding back on in your business. Okay. Identify one thing. Now take one step towards that this week, just one. And I'd love for you to write it to us. You can message us over on Instagram in the DM at the product boss, right? Come let us know and let this be your let's go challenge, right? Hashtag let's go challenge. I want you to send us a message. Just one step you are going to take towards the one thing. So again, identify one thing you've been holding back on in your business and take one step towards it this week. And that's it. Simple. Do not overwhelm this. Do not do anything that's going to like feel overwhelming. We're just going to take one step. And if you'd like to send us a message, I'd love to know it. So I want to hear from you, right? I don't want you to be on the sidelines anymore. Think about your biggest hurdle and how you're going to overcome it. Message us over there. And if this episode resonated with you in any way, and you would like to help us reach more business owners around the world so that we can also help them hit their goals. Would you mind leaving us a podcast review? Typically, Apple Podcasts is the easiest way to leave it. Um, But wherever you listen, if you could leave us a review, that would be incredible and so helpful. And that would be my ask for today. And I'd be ever so grateful. All right, my friends, till next time. Thank you for being here and listening all the way through the Product Boss Podcast. If you love our show and it has helped you in any way in your business, would you mind doing two things for us? Subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode and leave us a review. Reviews help other product entrepreneurs know that this is the place to be to grow their businesses and realize that they're not alone. And we know that you all know that a five-star and honest review helps you sell more products to more people. So you know that your reviews help us reach more listeners around the world. Remember what we give is what we receive. And we are all about helping each other in the product boss community. We are all in this together. We would be so appreciative of you. If you could take the time right now to subscribe, leave a review, and even share this episode on social or someone, you know, so we can impact more lives. And remember subscribing means that you will get notified each time we release a new episode. So you never miss a thing. 
You have helped us grow and climb into the top 10 of all marketing podcasts and together we can keep climbing. Thank you, friends. And remember, there is room at the top for all of us.